Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on anti-cancer chemotherapy. In this video, what we're going to talk about is a drug known as mitomycin C, which is an example of an aziridine um, anti-cancer chemotherapy. So mitomycin C, which is an example of an aziridine. Okay, and I will explain exactly what that means in a moment. Now, firstly, uh, mitomycin C is used as an anti-tumor drug. It is used to kill cancer cells. It's a pretty horrible drug. Uh, but the other thing that it uh, is important for is that it is also used as an antibiotic. Now, you would have to have a pretty severe ba life-threatening bacterial infection to actually be ever prescribed mitomycin C for a bacterial infection because it is a foul uh, cytotoxic drug, as we'll see, uh, but it is used uh, to stop the proliferation of bacterial cells just as it is used as an anti-cancer chemotherapy. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's discuss firstly what an aziridine is, and then we'll see the structure of mitomycin C. Uh, we'll see uh, how it actually works, how it's going to produce inter- and intra-strand crosslinks within DNA. So, like the nitrogen mustards, like the nitrosoureas, which we've already seen in this playlist, mitomycin C and the other aziridine anti-cancer chemotherapies are going to work by producing cross links between the DNA strands, and hence terminating transcription and DNA replication, stopping cell division. Okay, in addition, in certainly in cancer cells, what they're going to do is activate the p53 pathway and lead to uh, the cell committing apoptosis as well. Uh, providing, of course, that the cancer cell still has a working p53 pathway, which many tumours don't. Uh, however, even if it doesn't have a working p53 pathway, we'll still see how it's going to stop cell liver division. Right, so without further ado, let's turn to the structure of mitomycin C. But before we do that, I just want to discuss certain chemical groups that we're going to see within the structure of mitomycin C. So we'll start with the aziridine chemical group. So the aziridine is a free-membered ring, basically, consisting of a nitrogen atom and then two carbon atoms. So it's a triangle, like so, and then everything is then just saturated with hydrogens bound to it. Okay, so two hydrogens off this carbon and another two hydrogens off this carbon. So this is an aziridine ring. So it's a um, triangle ring, basically, consisting of two carbons and one nitrogen. So this is the aziridine ring. And we will see that the structure of mitomycin C has an aziridine ring within it. Okay, so, uh, next up, the other chemical structure I just want to briefly draw uh, for you. And by the way, we're going to go to using skeletal structures now, because if we don't use skeletal structures, everything just gets so messy. So we'll just draw the skeletal structure of aziridine to complete the picture. So here is the skeletal structure of aziridine. So in skeletal structures, you don't show carbon atoms. Instead, uh, corners represent carbon atoms. And you also don't show hydrogen atoms uh, bound off carbon atoms. So uh, here we have two implicitly shown carbons. And these carbons, you can see, only have two bonds. So it's implicit that the other two bonds are to hydrogen. Okay, now, Another chemical structure that I want to discuss with you is what's known as 1,4-benzoquinone, which is going to be a rather important structure in mitomycin C. And 1,4-benzoquinone has this structure, so it's a six-membered carbon ring similar to benzene. However, instead of having alternating double and single bonds, what you have is two double bonds here, and then off these carbons, at either end, you have carbonyl groups. So these two carbons here have these carbonyl groups, well, they're part of these carbonyl groups where they're double bonded to oxygen atoms, okay? And then all of these four carbons in between, they only have three bonds, so they also have hydrogens uh, coming off them. Right, so that's the structure of 1,4-benzoquinone. 
Right, so now, without any further ado, let's discuss the structure of the drug mitomycin C, and then we'll see how it actually works to produce interstrand and intrastrand crosslinks uh, within the DNA. All right, so it has one of these 1,4-benzoquinone groups within it, so we'll start by drawing the 1,4-benzoquinone. Okay, so here's our 1,4-benzoquinone here. Okay, and you've got these carbonyl groups at either end. So here's the 1,4-benzoquinone. Right, now off this carbon here, you have an amino group. So this is an H2N group here. And then off this group, and this is where um, I'm going to um, just bend the rules with the skeletal structure somewhat. So I'm going to draw this methyl group just to keep it like, looking nice and simple, because methyl groups look strangely odd if you actually just draw them uh, with their skeletal structure, because in the skeletal structure you just draw a line here, but it just looks a bit odd, so we'll put a methyl group there, so it's kind of half skeletal, half not. Okay, now this isn't the end of mitomycin C, unfortunately, it goes on, so you have another ring bound off here, another five-membered ring with a nitrogen here, Okay, so this is a five-membered ring, and nitrogen and four carbons make up this ring. So you've got a carbon here, a carbon here, carbon here, and a carbon here. And it gets worse, you've got another ring, basically, another five-membered ring, then comes off here. And although this isn't uh, the usual way of drawing five-membered rings, usually you try and draw them as pentamers, this actually is the nicest structure, well, it's the nicest way to denote the uh, mitomycin C molecule, because as you can see, everything's sort of nicely square here. It's nice and easy on the eye, basically, if you draw it like this. Okay, so we've got another ring here where we've got these four carbons, one, two, three, four, and then one nitrogen. Now, where's the aziridine ring, you might ask, because it's got to have an aziridine ring on. So finally, you have this little aziridine ring sticking off here, and I'll just put an NH so often people will pull this trick on you where they don't actually show the bond between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. They'll just stick the NH there and it's assumed that you understand what that means. It means nitrogen there and then the hydrogen off it. It just looks, again, it's nicer on the eye doing that. Okay, so now let's discuss a few final little things to add on to this structure. So the final things that we need to add on are you have an oxygen group here which then has a methyl group on. And often this is just written like this. So you have an oxygen, and then this oxygen will be bound to a carbon with three hydrogens off. But again, it's nice just to write it like that. Okay, and then to complete it now, off up here, we have a methylene group, which is often just written as CH2. So this is a carbon with two hydrogens off, and then linked further on to an oxygen with a carbon double bonded to an oxygen like this, so we've got this ester link here, and then finally we've got an amino group off there, so we've got this carbamoyl group here, as it's called. Okay, right, so this now is the final structure of mitomycin C. Okay, so all of these implicit carbons understand what they are, and wherever there's missing bonds off carbons, those are hydrogens, okay? So, for instance, this carbon here hasn't got enough hydrogen, hasn't got enough bonds, it's only got two, so it will then have two hydrogens coming off it. So this is the structure of mitomycin C. Right, so now let's discuss the reaction that mitomycin C is going to undergo in order to actually exert its effects on cells. So the person is going to take mitomycin C, it's going to go into the cancer cells, not specific, it's not specifically going to be targeted to the cancer cells, in fact it's going to go into every cell in the body, which is why you're going to get so many horrible side effects off this drug. But it's mainly selectively toxic to rapidly dividing cells. So basically what this drug is going to do is it's going to stop cells dividing. It's not too cytotoxic. Well, I say not to. Basically, it can stop cells dividing, it can stop your cancer cells dividing enough without actually killing you, basically. But it is horrible, horrible cytotoxic drug. So basically, what it's going to do is it's going to stop cells dividing. 
is the principle of what we're trying to do. So it will go into the normal cells of the body as well, but because they're not dividing, it's not going to be harm them, basically. What is going to happen, however, is it's going to stop the cells in your body which are physiologically meant to be dividing, such as, for instance, the cells that um, are responsible for making your hair, they're rapidly dividing. So when they stop dividing when you take this drug, you lose your hair, and that's a very famous side effect of anti-cancer chemotherapy. So that's why these drugs are, in, to an extent, uh, exerting their an effect only on cancer cells because they stop cellular division and therefore only the cells which are actually dividing are going to be f are going to feel the effects of this drug and uh, those are the cancer cells for one but there are a few physiological examples of where you have cells that are rapidly dividing and that's the basis of the side effects for anti-cancer chemotherapy. Okay, so let's see how this drug actually is going to stop a cell from dividing. Okay, so basically it cross-links DNA. However, what you find is that if you just put this drug in a test tube with DNA, then it has absolutely no effect whatsoever. And it's because it requires enzymic activation. It requires enzymes within the cell to actually activate the drug before it can cross-link uh, DNA. So we'll see in the next video how this activation process begins.